Hi, Lakia. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us on this just stunning day that we have. It is beautiful. Day. Yes. Yeah. Finally, finally getting to walk around a little bit and you know not have that winter coat on, which is amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. This is just what we need in times like this. So. Yes, exactly. So just for our members that are out there, I'm Mallory. I am the marketing and business manager for Scale Up Milwaukee, and this will be the first of our series in discussing different social distancing, um, general business advice, um, and just what's, what's going on in the world right now. So our first guest is Lakia with AMRI, um, and we'd love to just hear from you, Lakia, on your business, your history with Scale Up, and what's going on in your world right now. Awesome. Well, first of all, thank you for, um, for having me and, um, and setting this up. I really appreciate it. So my name is uh, Dr. Lakia Jones, and I am a um, licensed psychotherapist and a clinical substance abuse counselor. I'm also the uh, CEO of Amri Counseling Services here in Milwaukee. Um, we also have locations um, in Milwaukee and throughout Kenosha. So before I really go into that, um, we are living in some crazy times right now. <laughs> and so, yeah. um, so I'm doing well overall and hopefully our conversation today will help many others be able to um, get through this mentally well as, you know, as well. So uh, I've been in the field now for 19 years. Um, I started Amright Counseling Services back in 2006. So it's been, wow, 14 years already. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, time just flies. Every time I say it, doesn't it? Can't believe it. Um, but we are, again, we're a licensed mental health and substance abuse clinic. Uh, we provide an array of um, services, counseling services to children, adolescents, adults, couples, and families. Um, and we also provide a lot of support services, pharmacy services, and medication services as well. So um, our staff at AMRI consist of um, clinical clinical therapist, um, and also master level interns. Um, again, I talked about where we're located already, and, um, and I just guess I can't forget to mention that I also uh, wrote a book recently called You Are It. Um, I love that. Yeah, yeah, and uh, it's perfect for times like this, um, especially with people being in the home and really struggling mentally to push the, themselves to thinking positive and being positive. So the book does focus on utilizing uh, positive psychology methods uh, to overall help individuals and train their minds to think more positive and, um, and live positive lives. Um, so, awesome. Yeah, and you know, again, thank you for inviting me. I, I am an alum of Scale Up, so I'm really excited <laughs> about that to, to be speaking. Um, with you today. Uh, scale up throughout my process really helped me a lot to advance my business um, in many areas, such as marketing, strategic planning, and really understanding the importance of network marketing. So that was really huge for me. Um, it helped me to really advance my telehealth part of the business, which I'll go into a little bit later here, um, which was perfect for times like this. And um, really helped me to focus on my expansion of telehealth um, I didn't think it would happen this quickly, but, um, you know, things happen in our lives that are uncontrollable and sometimes it's for the better. Um, so uh, Scale Up really helped me in preparing that and um, I've carried on some of those relationships that I got from Scale Up with many of other business partners and um, other entities as well. So here we are. Love that. <laughs> um, and, you know, you know, a nice segue there, you know, talking about the different marketing um, organizational uh, courses and things like that through, um, you know, the Scale Up Accelerator program. You know, how has, you know, business changed for you? Your new business development strategy, um, marketing, um, organizationally, things like that. Um, you know, were there a lot of things that you were able to implement now with the, you know, working remote and things like that, where there are already some things in place that made this transition a lot more smooth. Would just love to hear how, how your business has changed and how you have been able to adapt during this time. Yeah, yeah. good question. Um, so, you know, I mentioned that my, my field is mental health um, and substance abuse treatment. And so, you know, just a little bit of statistics so people can kind of understand about mental health and kind of where that, uh, where we are with that. The need for mental health services is huge. Um, 
millions and millions of people are diagnosed every year with some kind of mental health condition. And only, um, it, and really it, it's sad because 75% of those people reported having a mental health issue and not getting treatment or not receiving services. Um, so about a year ago, I really, um, really a couple years ago, I really started tr strategizing on how we could better assist those in need of mental health counseling, especially in crisis times. Um, and I figured out that the best way is telehealth. However, the rules and restrictions around telehealth services was so, um, I mean, you, you really couldn't implement telehealth the way you want to, to really focus on decreasing barriers to treatment. Um, and so, the pandemic happened, right? Um, and you talk about what was the marketing strategy that really changed things and how did I really implement those things moving forward? So we were already in the process of launching, not just locally, but more worldwide to be able to assist people with mental health needs. Um, and telehealth allows for that because it is a virtual platform, whether it's um, audio communication, so such as phone or video communications. And uh, prior to this, the rules governing telehealth was so strict that only a very small percentage of people actually qualify for telehealth services. And only a very small percentage of insurance companies would even reimburse for those services. So um, it made it very, very difficult. However, that has changed. And um, which now has allowed us to really move telehealth forward in a much faster speed than I had ever imagined. And so I would say prior to this pandemic, we, um, you know, we were moving at a slower pace, trying to cross every T, dot every I, right? Just like any other business owner. But what happened with this pandemic is it forced everyone, not just Amri Counseling Services, but it forced so many business owners to find a way to now operate their business vir virtually, right? Um, and so for us, despite the bad about this uh, situation in this pandemic, um, this was huge for us because this allowed us to move, move um, you know, 100 miles per hour versus 10 like we were before. Of course, with an amazing team. I have a very amazing team, by the way, um, at the clinic. So, yeah. We had policies and procedures already in place. Um, we were already using a HIPAA compliant platform. We were already providing telehealth services to those who had um, self pay, right? Could pay out of pocket or maybe were a part of an EAP, which is employee assistance program. So some of those steps were in place. So what this pandemic does is said, now it's time to go, right? And now it's time to really get moving. Um, this is your opportunity to really help individuals who are suffering with mental health illnesses. And now is the time and now or never. Um, because now with the COVID-19 pandemic, you have people really dealing with some serious anxiety, depression, right? Um, dealing with issues regarding social distancing, which I know we'll get into a little bit later. But it's, it's really launched our part of the business. And so we're really hoping to grow it, not just here again, but throughout the United States and hopefully Canada as well. Sure. So, you know, with, with you being able to utilize telehealth um, and, you know, with some of those restrictions and guidelines being loosened and obviously opening up doors that, you know, you couldn't go through before, um, would you say that the makeup of, you know, your patients and clients has changed? Like, have you seen more business owners come through? Have you seen more um, EAP um, type requests coming? Like, how is how has it affected uh, just the general composition of who you typically see? Yeah, I would say that um, it has really opened up many doors for those, especially those who were a little bit apprehensive about receiving counseling, um, and rather that is a, a business owner or um, someone within a community. Um, you know, there's still a lot of stigma around mental health, obviously, and um, people who are a little bit nervous about receiving services or maybe even felt they weren't ready to receive services. And so just taking that first step in the door is difficult for most. So that this, this process, this telehealth process, right, now eliminates some of those, some of that stigma. 
And to just to be able to receive services from home or from your from the comfort of wherever you are um, is huge. And for our world to now see that this is a huge need and this could be the true answer to eliminating many of those barriers to treatment. So I would say Absolutely. that our, you know our population um, are your children, your adolescent adults, um, couples. We do couples counseling. We even do family counseling right here on. Um, through telehealth. And you know, these are situations where before we couldn't get families together, right? So now families can get together virtually in one platform to be able to dis discuss some of the issues that they may have been um, facing or dealing with all this time that maybe they would not have come to the office for. Sure, so this seems to be like a, a trend that, that's here, here to stay well after social distancing. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Telehealth is definitely not going anywhere. If anything, it's gonna advance at this point there is some restrictions that are temporary um, that the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services have identified as temporary changes, but they've also rolled out some permanent changes that are huge um, that will help people like our business owners um, and others to be able to, to receive services in a more confidential way um, and, you know, and, and in the comfort of like their own home or um, in ways that they maybe could not receive services before. So the impact on um, what is happening, which we don't quite all know what's happening, right? <laughs> um, but but I will say that, you know, out of the, of what all the, the bad stuff we hear, all of the, um, the, the quick change, change is not easy for most people. That also generates a lot of anxiety and other, can kick in other mental health issues there is positive that I think will come out of this. That's a really great way of putting it. And I think, you know, it is a mixed bag right now, just because Absolutely. people, you know, aren't too sure what's going to happen. But mm -hmm. it sounds like you guys are really making the best of it and seeing a lot of opportunity here to, to help people and to, to scale your business. Yeah. Um, so that being said, you know, how, how are you scaling your business? Um, well, you know, so one of the things we're doing is we talked about um, just mental health in general. And so for me, we have, um, have had to put some things in place to ensure that business continues. And that's, that's one thing that's really huge about small business owners, right? Um, if we don't put things in place that are gonna work for ourselves and our staff at home, um, we could be in trouble. And so some of those things to help as far as our mental health is really having things in place. So one of the things that I do is I, I just try to remain really calm during these types of situations, right? Um, that's really important. So I would say to any business owner that the first thing to do is really remain calm. Um, you know, being solution focused is really important. And so that's having, you know, putting a strategic plan in place so that you can be solution focused. And you can start to take this time, right? This time, that, this little bit of downtime to really strategize what the next steps are and what your business will look like. And so that is something that I've been doing um, and trying to find ways on how we can still conduct everyday business virtually. So um, some of the things that I've started doing obviously is meetings. So we have supervision, we have clinical collaboration, we have various meetings that normally are face-to-face. -face. And most businesses have operated that way for so many years. And so now what, what has happened is we have started to be um, a little innovative, right? Um, it's just our, you and I are um, talking through a video platform. So our weekly meetings are through video, our supervisions are through video platform, um, any of our staffings and orientations are through video. So just really helping ensure that staff is comfortable uh, with the processes, ensuring that they have everything that they need to be able to work effectively is huge. And also um, staying in contact with staff and things like that. So some of the things is really just, again, staying calm and putting together a maybe even new strategic plan for some businesses on how to effectively move forward and how to tailor the business so that it can be somewhat, um, so it can be effective remotely. Absolutely. Well, and speaking of remote, you know, you're a mother, you're a grandmother. 
Uh, yeah. You were just saying you're doing your, you know, your second doctorate. Congratulations. Thank you. Now an author. <laughs> yeah, an author, a business, all the things. <laughs> yeah. You know, and now working remote and yeah. managing your team remotely and your patients. So, you know, you have, you're juggling a lot and, you know, that's incredible and congratulations to you. Thank you. Um, it's very impressive. Um, but that being said, you know, what has this done to you? your new routine and, you know, how you are managing your employees and, you know, just truly you personally and how you're kind of managing, you know, your kids being home um, and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, day I by day. <laughs> you know, some people ask that question and I say, I don't know. But then I started to think about it and I think I do know. Right. Um, when you really sit down and write it out, and figure out what works and what doesn't work. And that's, that's been key for me. And so scheduling is huge. Scheduling is huge. So I schedule everything. I schedule waking up the kids. I schedule uh, meetings. I schedule work that I have to do. I schedule, you know, spending time with the children and the family, um, spending time with my husband. All of that, I literally have to schedule. And I know it sounds a little cheesy maybe, right? Having to... <laughs> schedule out um, even personal time. But if you don't schedule when working from home, it will make things very difficult. Because working from home, what it does, it kind of clumps everything all into one. It's work, yeah. it's school, it's taking care of the children, it's having dinner ready, it's being a wife. It's all of these things in one atmosphere. And before you know it, you don't know what the, t the time of the day is anymore. You don't know what the day, the day of the week is anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so really um, scheduling is huge. Another thing that I do that is very helpful is a to-do list. I am constantly updating on a daily basis my to-do list. It allows me to kind of get some of those thoughts and all of those responsibilities out of my mind and on paper. And I find that to be very beneficial. Um, and as I go through and I complete various tasks, I'm crossing out those items that I've completed. Every time I get a new phone call, right, of um, someone adding something else to my to-do list, because we know that will happen, right? That will happen for all business owners. Yep. <laughs> and so what I do is instead of trying to tackle the question or the answer right then and there at that point, I am writing down what the task is and letting them know, you know, please allow, you know, me two days or so to get back to you on this. Um, so really just, again, scheduling, not putting too much on my plate, not scheduling more meetings in a day that I can handle. Um, and then, you know, taking some time throughout the day to just breathe. You know, just taking easy some easy to get. Yeah, easy to forget. <laughs> yeah, just taking some deep breaths. You know, you're home. So if you need to do some yoga in the middle of the day, or or take a walk in the middle of the day, or um, you know, get your thoughts together. It, it's a it's an opportunity for you to be able to do that. Come back, reset, and get back to work, and get back to growing your business, and get back to being a hundred percent for your staff that need you now more than ever. And so some of those things are what I do. Um, and I try to help lead staff in that same direction when it comes to what they can do as well. Um, because they have to be mentally well so that they can be mentally well for the clients that we serve. Absolutely. So it sounds like boundaries, allowing yourself to have a break Absolutely. and forgiving yourself <laughs> for that Absolutely. break and just being Absolutely. kind to yourself. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, I think those are amazing tips, you know, for business owners and really anyone um, but how would you say that leaders can, you know, other than, you know, kind of setting boundaries, mm -hmm. scheduling things reasonably, um, you know, doing more virtual hours and, you know, truly recognizing that this is a tough time um, for everyone, regardless of your position in the company or just generally, um, what else can leaders do to support their employees through all this? Yeah. Again, good question. Um, it's really important for, especially for business owners. Your business can't run effectively without an amazing team, right? And a, a, a good team is, um, is what really holds the business together because we can't, we can't do it by ourselves. It's just impossible, right? And in order to have a really good 
business and a, and a, and a good team, um, being supportive and being there for them is really important. So I actually, I have a couple tips that I want to share that I, that I share with my staff as well. So, you know, I, I definitely have to share with everyone. Um, objectivity. Objectivity is key. Uh, remaining calm is key. So those are some really, really key pointers. So we are, you know, we're living in uncertain times. And with the COVID-19 and the pandemic, it's, everyone is stressing. They are panicking and full of anxiety. Even to a point where if they've never felt anxiety like they feel now, they don't even know or can identify what that feels like. And so understanding what your staff is going through, um, trying to keep staff as calm as possible is key. And really just being objective and, um, and being there for your staff, you know, helping them remain calm and safe during this time. One of the other tips that I would say is really having open communication with staff and with your employees. So because we are living in uncertain times, they don't know what's going on. They are afraid from the things that they hear in the news that they possibly could be laid off. Um, they need security. They need to be secure in knowing that you as a business owner and as a CEO has a plan, have an effective plan that could ensure their jobs and could ensure that the direction that the business is going will include them and will prosper past this pandemic. And I think that is really huge. Um, so really communicating openly to your staff is vital and um, helping them to understand that you appreciate, you appreciate them. You appreciate what they're doing. Um, you appreciate the, um, the amount of extra effort that they're putting into to get past this and still be able to, to run a business during this time. The other piece I think that's really important is um, implementing some best practices and really just educating your employees around um, the, your business more now and how um, it affects the community and the people that your business serves. So really, again, providing that support to them, providing, showing empathy. I think that is one of the most key pieces is showing that empathy piece. As, as business owners, we are quick to delegate. <laughs> we are um, looking at the bottom line, right? We're looking at the, the goal, the, 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 the point that you make that finish line. But well, sometimes we have to step back and we have to really be empathetic to what our staff are also feeling and going through this during these times. Um, giving your employees mm -hmm. guidance, you know, is really important. Um, and being creative. I think one of the things that I've implemented is just really being creative on how I show appreciation to my staff, virtual appreciation, um, you know, show appreciation through Zoom, Zoom meetings. We had a, a meeting on Monday and we had um, um, crazy hat day. So we had everyone wear a crazy hat. And so we had 30, 30 something people are here. We had crazy hats. We took just a moment to step away from business and laugh and enjoy each other um, and talk about where we got these crazy hats from. So being um, creative in that way, there are um, platforms that I like to discuss a little bit too that I think that could be helpful in you know, sending birthday cards to staff virtually during this time, um, sending, um, you know, doing other types of um, staff appreciation, but just really helping staff understand that there is a way to continue business as normal, or maybe not as normal, maybe this thing called new normal, we should say, but just having that new normal, right? Um, and still be able to run a successful business that way. And so I think that is key that we are there as CEOs for our staff, probably now more than we ever have been. Um, a lot of people think that because we're working from home, it's less work. As a CEO, I would say it is double the work mm -hmm. because you have a full um, team that is counting on you, that need your support, that need to hear from you and actually speak with you more than they have in the past. And so those are some, just some three or four tips of best practice. Um, and just, I don't know if we have time to talk a little bit about some platforms. Can we get into that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, I think we can include that for everybody after um, okay. with a little note about everything. I think those are all amazing tips. And, you know, I hate to bring up the other side of it, but obviously yeah. there are a lot of people that are going through, you know, layoffs and, you know, pay reductions and, 
and, and potentially closing their doors, which has, you know, been a hard realization for a lot of us. Um, yeah. But, you know, as you said, it's the, you know, the new normal also comes with, you know, some downside. Um, what would you say, you know, just a, a tip or two or just, you know, again, allowing yourself, you know, you know, your own forgiveness um, in terms of some of these tougher conversations that owners are going to start to have? Yeah, yeah. The, you know, one of the key pieces about um, what is happening and how, um, and how, how fast everything is happening is that we can't control it. And it's unfortunate, but we can't control what is happening. The only thing we can, can do something about is the things that we can't control. So, you know, I would say to business owners that are faced with those challenges of maybe having to lay off people or having to close doors, is to really sit down and again, kind of go back to that strategizing piece that we talked about earlier. Um, before you decide to close a door, before you decide to lay off, um, you know, look at every option. Look at every option. I know I have been getting tons of emails um, from various SBAs, um, different um, entities that are supporting small businesses through this time to be able to pay staff. Um, you know, during this time that maybe um, you couldn't, you, you wouldn't be able to if you didn't have the support from them. And so I would say do some research. There is um, quite a bit of funding out there to help small businesses that will help you pay for payroll um, during this time as well. So really just weighing out what, what the options are, figuring out the business that you have and how well could the business run or if it could run at all through a virtual platform. I think that would be the, the start. Um, don't make quick decisions. Don't make irrational decisions. Don't make decisions off of fear. Um, definitely don't make decisions off when you're full of anxiety um, because that is a setup for failure, seriously. The feelings of anxiety that you feel um, mm -hmm. will subside over time. And although that may take practice, that also may change have to change through what's happening right now. It is important that you think about how much work and effort you've put into these businesses, how you've also hired people who have um, relied on you. And so again, we kind of go back to that open communication with staff. If a business is in a position where they have no other choice but to lay off or to, to close doors, having one-on-one -on -one conversations with them is really important. I think it shows integrity on your end as a business owner and as their boss or their, their supervisors, right? Um, that if, you know, if the business is able to flourish again, that they will be in contact with them and they can ensure that they would love to have them back on the team. And that um, if they had some control over this situation, it would not be this, this way. And so again, showing that empathy, empathy and being able to help them understand that we are living in unprecedented times. We, we don't know what the, what the future has in store, but that they still have a commitment to their business and to the people who have may ha have um, had commitments to them all, all this time. Yeah, very well said. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, a lot of people are going to have those conversations. And I think, you know, that empathy component, whether it's, you know, conversations about pay reductions or just, you know, general business practice. I think that's that's a key a key component that a lot of people are are having to tap into yeah. quite a bit more <laughs> than ever before. Um, so yeah, just to just to close out, just generally with social distancing and quarantines and you know things that none of us in our lifetime have ever dealt with and hopefully won't have to again. Um, you know, how do you see this affecting mental health? Um, you know, in the, in the long term, and even after social distancing has, you know, come to an end, um, how do you see that it, this really playing out in a mental health capacity uh, for the foreseeable future? Yeah. So social distance is interesting because um, you have your introverts and you have your extroverts, right? And for your introverts, they are like, they're like, well, this is what I do anyway. And yeah. <laughs> Yeah, let's jump on virtual parties and let's do some things, yeah. right, together. Um, welcome to my world, right? That's what some introverts would say. And extroverts are not doing well. 
They are not, they are the ones that are not doing well during this time. So we're gonna look at this from two different aspects. One would be, um, it can cause major, major issues when it comes to our mental health. And for some who have been dealing with mental health issues that maybe couldn't work from home in, in the past, maybe now can work from home. So this brings hope for some people. So there's two different sides to that. It's very difficult at times like this to really isolate yourself. The weather's getting better, um, you know, and so people were ready for the winter to be over and to have some sunlight and get some vitamin D on their skin. And, you know, and now they're saying, well, you can't do much of that. You have to stay inside. And so it's really important during times like this to, again, try to remain positive as much as possible. Um, use this time to, be, to help build your business. Use this time to connect with family and friends and loved ones. But it can affect us mentally. And I think that the way to eliminate that and to try to help um, decrease some of those feelings, the feelings of stress, the feelings of anxiety, the worrying, all of that really does play effect on our autoimmune system as well. And so what is happening right now from what we hear, right? I mean, we, we get different information every single day on what this thing is that's going around, right? The name COVID-19. But what that is doing is it's affecting people with, you know, really with uh, weak immune systems, right? Um, or immune systems that have been, um, that are not maybe as great as someone that is in 100% um, health. But we're also hearing that is happening to people who maybe have never been sick. And so st stress, worrying and things like that do cause a direct effect, not only mentally, but also physically on your body. And so it's really important to stay hydrated, to drink lots of, um, to take your vitamins, to drink lots of um, orange juice during this time, take a lot of vitamin C in. But from a mental health standpoint, there is some things that you can do to help with the social distancing. Um, you know, they say it's okay to walk a dog, it's okay to go out in your backyard, but just try to stay away from, from individuals. The other piece would be there are virtual parties that are going on right now. People have became so, um, it's you know, just become, it's been interesting, right? They just become so creative in this virtual space. Yeah. And so I have attended some of these virtual parties and they've been absolutely amazing. Um, I have a virtual party set up with my staff on next week. And Love so <laughs> yeah, we're gonna do a virtual party. And I told them we're gonna put the work aside and, um, and just enjoy that time. And I think FaceTiming with family and friends a little bit more than maybe you have in the past, implementing game time and implementing movie nights, um, implementing time where you work out in the home with the family. All of these things will kind of help raise your spirits, help you to be, um, to be feeling more positive and to kind of keep moving and not um, get too complacent. So really the key during this time is to, you know, try to be mentally well as much as possible and, um, and to keep at it with your business. Uh, one of the things that we do as business owners is that we, I know we work a lot. We work a lot, we do a lot. And, um, and so sometimes for some people that's good. It keeps our mind occupied and it keeps us going. So again, for some, this is um, not gonna affect them in a negative way and for others, it may. So hopefully some of those tips will kind of help with, you know, lightening up that feeling of social distancing, really just using this time to stay connected virtually, again, through audio communication, so that could be phone, um, contact friends and families that maybe you haven't talked to in years, reconnect with family and friends that maybe you haven't reconnected with in years. Um, those types of things are very important during this time. Sure. And it sounds like staying connected um, during this time is going to help that, that long-term overall mental health even as we come out of this. Absolutely. That's great. Well, Lakia, is there anything else that you would like our members to know? Um, how, you know, obviously we'll share your contact information um, and things like that after this is done, but is there anything, you know, that you're offering during this time? Um, yeah. or anything you just what, would want your, you know, our members and business owners and whatnot to know. Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely have a couple of things to share. Um, I think that will help with some of the business owners for sure. So there are some platforms that I find to be very helpful and I definitely wanted to share this with um, everyone. Although there are hundreds of them out there that we're finding to be very valuable during this working from home piece. 
But of course, Zoom is huge for meetings and things like that, meeting with your staff, orientations, trainings. There's um, Skype and Google Hangout, right, that you can also um, utilize. Some of the other things that I've noticed that have helped me is um, we use DocuSign. So DocuSign is a platform that you can use that will allow individuals to sign certain documents um, right from their phone or their laptop. And so normally you would have people, you know, sign a document in front of you, but because you're working virtually from home, you're not able to do that. So I find that DocuSign is very helpful. Some of the other apps or platforms that I find that to be very helpful is um, for those that maybe normally have receptionists and can't keep their receptionist at this time, there's a, a service that I used to use um, that I find to be very valuable is Smart Receptionist. A Smart Receptionist is a service of callers that are answering the phones on your behalf for your business and they sound just like they're in your office. Um, and so, although there are some business owners that might be in tough situations that they can't keep receptionists at this time, that's a go-to. Um, I've used them, I highly recommend them, and I think that that would be great for businesses. Again, there's apps for birthday cards, um, anniversary cards that you, can, that you can utilize as well. For scanning, I use Genius Scan. That's an app that I find very helpful. Um, you can scan a document right on your phone and email that or upload it to um, certain softwares. And so I find that you know, utilizing various apps help during this time because you feel so helpless when you're not in the office and you don't have all of these the printer the scanners um you know it's you, three o'clock you don't have that face to face so i think my computer is warning me what time it is here yeah. <laughs> it's telling me stop talking but yeah, I, right. <laughs> I wanted to share with uh, the business owners that um there there are platforms now you know now is a really good time to start looking into that and doing some research because I have been able to fully implement my business from home through many of these platforms. And I use all of the platforms I've shared with you. Um, and again, there's other ones out there too. So I'm excited about the future. Um, and I hope that whether this is a uphill for some businesses or a downhill for the moment, um, you know, I hope that um, people will be able to find ways to think very positive and objectively about this to be able to, to sit back and strategize again on their businesses to find ways to operate their business in this new normal um, that we are living through we don't know what the future has in store but we definitely know that this future is moving towards more uh, electronic more virtual platforms so i think it's really important that the businesses align themselves in their business to um to help and to reach as many people not just locally anymore, but now look at taking your business worldwide from a virtual standpoint. Absolutely. And I believe you said too that you were offering some free consultation yes. and whatnot during this time too. Absolutely. So we are, um, I am here. I'm here for you. Um, I get it. I understand as business owners, it is so difficult. You want to know what people are doing. What can you do? I'm, I'm definitely my my doors are open, right? My virtual doors are open to be able to assist. So um, I know you're going to be sharing information, but I will just quickly just give my cell phone number, Perfect. email address, and just some contact information. And I'll be more than happy to um, set up free consultations to meet with you and to discuss how I could help or maybe even help some of your staff during this time um, to deal with how they're dealing with these, these um, changes mentally. So my phone number is 414-455-3879. Uh, and you can reach me at extension 801. So again, that's 414-455-3879, extension 801. Um, and then my email is my first and last name together, which is L-A-K-E-I-A, -E last name Jones, J-O-N-E-S, at amricounseling.com. The, um, I talked about my book earlier today, so I, can't, I have to mention that. I think this book is definitely an amazing, um, something to work on. It is not only just a book, but it's a journal in there too. And again, it helps with really focusing on those positive thoughts so that you can be productive in business. 
And so you can purchase the book as well if you like. Um, and you can go to www.youareitmovement.com to purchase that book. But I'm here. I'm here for business owners. I'm here for your staff. Um, again, I have 29 therapists that are open to meet with you and to meet with your staff as well. And anything that we can do to really support businesses throughout this time, we, we, we're, we're here. We're here for you. So, Great. Well, we can't thank you enough, Wikia, for joining us today. Um, just really great points, um, you know, thank from you. personal to business owner to employees and everything in between. Uh, we, we just can't thank you enough. Um, and for all of our members, we'll be sure to, you know, put out all of Wikia's contact information and some of the resources she listed today. Um, and have a have a wonderful rest of the day and enjoy this weather. Thank you, you as well. <laughs> Thank you again for allowing me the opportunity. Very awesome. Thank you, Lakia. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Have a good day.